Hi, so now we're going to start looking at function block diagram and we're going to use the parking lot lab to do that. So let's take a look at what we have. I've got my parking lot trainer set up here in factory I.O. and over here in Studio 5000 let's see I've got my main routine and there's nothing in it but this is set up for ladder logic and I don't want to use ladder logic I want to use function block diagram so the first thing I need to do is create a routine for function block diagram I'll right click on main program add new routine and I'm just gonna call this control and this is important I don't want ladder diagram I need to change this to function block diagram all right, that's all I need for that. So I've created a, a new routine called Control. And it's got nothing in it, so that's good. Bit of housekeeping. I want to get rid of this original main routine, so I'm going to right click and delete it. And it's going to give me a warning that that's the main routine. Yeah, that's fine. But now I don't have a main routine in my project, so that's going to be a problem. So to fix that, right click on main program properties and under configuration main right now is none that's no good I have to have a main routine so I'm gonna make it control and hit OK and the way you can tell there should be a little one there right on the icon for control it's kinda of hard to see okay first thing we do with function block diagram is you need to forget everything you learned about ladder logic that's the best way to start so let's look at my trainer here I've got two inputs I've got car arrives and car leaves I've got three boolean outputs three lights and I've got two displays so two integer outputs and then I know inside there I have to have two counters and I have to have a timer. Right now I'm going to start with, I'm just going to do one counter and I'm going to forget about the timer. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Alright, first thing I need, the heart of the system, I need a counter. So right here in the middle I'm going to put a counter. Now if I look up at the top here, I'm just going to make this a little bigger. There's my timers and counters and right now let me go to my tags so right now I have two counters and a timer, some booleans and two integers okay go to my control and I'm going to add a CTUD that's count up down and I just clicked on that and it put it in the middle here now let me go back to my tags and you notice down the bottom here now I've got a tag for this guy so I didn't have to make a tag it created it for me okay let's take a look at what we have here we've got count up enable count down enable a preset a reset accumulated value and a done bit and then if I click on this ellipsis up here it gives me some other things that I could turn on and off I'm gonna leave it at default for now so count up count down that would be my car arrive and car leaves over here I've got my inputs so I'm going to add two inputs one of these is going to be my car arrive and the other is going to be my car leaves so there's my two buttons my two inputs my car arrive and my car leave now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach these to my count up down so I just get my mouse over there where it turns green and draw that over to that input on my counter and I'll draw this one over. Now I've got my count up, my count down. I need a preset. And to do that, I'm going to use 
there's a few ways I could do it, but I want to see what my number is here. So I'm going to do another input. And this guy, instead of a input address or an alias, I'm just going to put in number 5. And hook that to my preset. Now, let's see my ACC, my accumulated, I want that to hook to my display here. So I need an output, that's this guy. And I'll hook that to my ACC. And that would be my cars and lot. Okay, let me see if that works. Let's go online. Communication, who active. After I've set my project path, I can just go online, but this is the first time, so I need to do my who active. Expand my backplane. Find my controller on my emulator. And then hit go online. Okay, I'm online, but I'm not in run mode. Now, keep an eye on the borders when I go into run mode. Right now, everything there is gray. I'm going to put it in run mode. And now notice how everything went green. So that tells me I'm in run mode and I'm really seeing what's going on with the controller. I'll go to my factory I.O. And I need to expand this a little bit so I can see my connect button. And factory I.O. is connected. So now, when I push the sensor, this is not going to turn green like it would in ladder logic, but I want to keep an eye on this value. Right now it's zero, or it's cold. And when I push it, this should go to a one. I'm going to press and hold it. Notice that went to a one, and my ACC also went to a one. I let go and it goes back to zero. My accumulated went to one, and here my output's at one. So I'll push it again. It went to two. And that time I pressed it so fast you couldn't see it actually changed to one. So I'll push and hold it. There we see it go to one, and my ACC is at four. And that's sending the value to my integer out, and that's updating my display. Now if I have a car leave, the car leave sensor goes hot, my accumulated value goes down, and everything seems to be working. Okay, so that's how easy it is for function block diagram. It's very different from ladder logic, and best thing to do is think about what do you need to accomplish and then put in the blocks that you need to accomplish it. A couple little tricks with function block. One is if you have, say I have this done bit, I'll go offline. Say I want this done bit to reset my, my counter. I can do that and it resets itself. The problem is I've created a loop and function block's not going to know where to start when it starts running the scans. So all I need to do, anytime I have a loop, I have to tell it where to start. So I right click on this dotted line and I think I missed it. There we go. Right click and I have to say assume data available. And that's just a fancy way of saying start here. That gave me this little double arrow there and everything's going to be good with that. So that's one of the tricks. There's a few tricks with function block but we'll get into that as we go. Okay, if I want to, I'm going to add a little bit more. What I want to do now is I want to light this green light when a car goes in. So I want to put in a timer. So if I find my timer on with reset, I'll get rid of this. I don't need it. Now, with my car arrive sensor, I'm going to hook that to my timer enable. 
I want a preset of say two seconds so this time instead of using an input like this I'm gonna go into the parameters and on preset I'm just gonna change that to 5000 so now I have my preset I don't see it on here but I don't always want to see it on my my layout because sometimes it gets cluttered so I've got my preset of five seconds and I don't have timer timing here that's because it's not shown so I'll go back to my properties and there's timer timing there I click on it hit OK and now I have my timer timing so I need to there's a lot of different properties that you can use you don't always have to have them all shown so there's my timer timing and I need an output and that's my OK to enter. So while my timer is timing, I turn on that blue light. Let's go back online and see how that looks. All right, I've downloaded. I'm all green here. It's important to make sure you're all green to know that you're in control. Now let's see what happens. I hit my button and if I hold it my timer is going to work and as soon as I let go it's not going to work so that means I need to latch this timer on so I need one more thing here let's go back offline and I need to have a reset dominant so I'm going to I just right click add element RESD and you'll get very used to reset dominance. So I'm going to delete that line, hook this to my set, hook my output to the timer enable. What this does, it's kind of like a latch. So when I send a hot signal to my reset, it's going to set it on and it's going to stay on until I tell it to turn off. And I'm going to tell it to turn off with my timer done bit so take my done bit drag it around to reset and now I have a loop that's going to cause a problem so right click I can right click on any of these well there's only two connectors this time no matter how many connectors you have to have one that's the assumed data available in other words start here okay let's try that change it back to run mode Connect this guy again. I've got my green checkbox, so I'm okay there. Now, when I click my button, it latched that timer on and that light stayed on for the five seconds. You notice here, I can see my accumulated value counting up, and I can see that my timer timing stayed hot until that timer finished and then it went cold. Over here, if I look at my car arrive sensor, that's going to go hot while I press it. And this reset out is going to stay hot until it gets reset. So keep an eye on that guy. There it's hot. It's staying hot until it gets reset. And notice with this, you have a normally open and a normally closed output. So you can use either one. So it's very flexible. Okay, those are some of the basics with Function Block. Have a try. Talk to you soon.